Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thanks so much for joining me today. If you're here for the first time, thanks so much. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can check out my other videos. And if you're here for a second or third or fourth video, thank you so much for your support. Uh, greatly, greatly appreciate it and welcome back. Um, in today's video, we're gonna be giving tribute to Van Gogh and kind of focusing on his very expressive, impressionistic style and painting uh, one of his iconic pieces. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. And Van Gogh is a very popular paint at home subject matter. So I think you guys are gonna enjoy this. With this painting and any painting that I teach, you are more than welcome to switch out colors, uh, change it up, make it your own. Um, and quite a few people do that even with the old master painting. So feel free to change out and make it what you want. What you're gonna see in the description box below is a link to a supply kit. And in that supply kit are all the colors, paints, brushes, surfaces that you might need to get started painting at home. So grab any of those extra uh, supplies that you might need and then pick up the video for the painting portion. Another thing that you're gonna see in the description box below is a link to a traceable. And a traceable is a way for my first time and beginner painters to get your initial composition on your canvas without having to stress out about drawing and without basically having to stress out. So check the link below to where to acquire the traceable. And there's also a video on how to transfer your traceable to your surface. When you are a little bit more comfortable with your painting process and you wanna take your skills to the next level, check out my online school, paintwithlovejoy.com and check out my uh, featured course on there, Paint Your Pet. And you will be painting from your own pet photograph and I'll go through the process on how to break it down and pick which photo and go through the process of painting. But when you paint something you care about, it's a whole new ball game for you. And you actually learn more and you put more energy into um, making it awesome. And it's your pet, so it's gonna be awesome. Uh, and that course is geared towards first time and beginner painters. So check it out and just keep evolving your skills as you get more and more into the creative process. So I think that's enough talking. Let's go ahead and get started painting. guys it's gonna be another fun painting this Van Gogh um, and just to clarify this is a Van Gogh fan art piece Van Gogh did not actually paint this subject matter so make sure you uh, take all your progress photos and once you have your traceable transfer to your canvas um, here on mine I actually went over with Sharpie marker and that was to help those uh, that are gonna draw this at home or uh, draw this freehand on their canvas so you don't have to go over yours with the black Sharpie marker. It'll actually be easier to cover the lines from the tra from the carbon paper um, than it is from the black Sharpie marker. All right, so what we're gonna do is we are using that middle flat brush and we're starting off with a light blue. Um, and you can see here where I've had to mix it a couple of times. You start with your white and then add a touch of blue to get to your shade of light blue. And if you have to mix this more than once and you have a slightly varying shade, don't stress out about it. That's okay, because we're gonna actually be putting darker and other shades of blue on top of this. And as you saw in the note before, if you are using student grade paint, please apply your paint a little bit thicker. It'll just make it a little bit easier for you. So once you have basically the background filled in, we're gonna make a medium blue going a little bit darker. And you can see here where I'm just kind of using the side of the brush and just making these dash marks. And the light blue paint is still wet, so it is kind of changing the color of the medium blue a little bit, but there still is a difference. So you want to make sure that these dash marks that you're applying are one or two shades darker than what you um, applied for the main color on the background. And if you need to, um, I'm using that middle flat brush and just kind of, again, making those dash marks. But if you need to use the pointy brush to be able to make those lines, go right ahead and switch out brushes. We are keeping this in the Van Gogh style with all these little dash marks. And we will be overlapping other colors and it is okay to overlap um, all your dash marks. It actually just makes for a fuller picture. All right, so we are gonna move into the blue now just grabbing that direct blue or a little bit darker 
same thing. So as we go through this painting today, I want you to work on your power of observation. So I want you to notice where I place each of these colors and then mimic that to the best of your ability on your canvas. If you are inclined to do something a little bit different than I do, go right ahead and trust your instincts and give it a try. All right, going back to that medium blue, we're gonna start moving into the structure of our portrait of this cat. And starting down here, and we're gonna kind of build on our skills today. So we're gonna lay our base color for each section, and then we're gonna be putting dash marks of various colors on top of this. And with this being a channel for first time and beginner painters, I like to kind of build on the same skills so that way you get good practice. And with that being said, I highly recommend that you uh, find creative outlets on a regular basis for yourself. All right, so now going in with the darker blue, and some of you may be using that direct blue, uh, just kind of depends on how, um, how dark your medium blue was. But again, you wanna be making these dash marks in a few shades darker than what you were using for the base color. And even notice how some of them are going off the edge of the canvas. Make sure you do that, and that kind of gives the eye an indication that the image is bigger than what's actually on the canvas. And now moving into the light blue and possibly even white. Because the paint's wet, it will change a little bit. It won't stay that pure white. And again, overlapping those dash marks and just kind of filling up the space. If you happen to be holding your breath right now, please take a big inhale, just relax. I'm really proud of you for painting at home. You are gonna find that while you paint this, the rest of the world ceases to exist for a little bit and you get lost in the process of painting. So here for the shirt, that was a super, super light blue and then going in with a little bit darker, slapping it on there and then you'll see I wipe the brush off and then go back with light pressure slightly blend that darker color into the lighter base. All right, so a good place to take your progress photo. We're gonna be switching up to raw sienna plus orange. And we're gonna be moving into the first layer for our ginger cat. Now this painting was a viewer request. I actually had not heard of it, um, but if you type in Van Gogh ginger cat, um, You'll, you'll see some interesting uh, renditions and what I consider fan art when you do it in the style of um, who you were inspired by. All right, so again, just using that brush sideways, observe where this goes and just mimic that on your canvas. If it is slightly different or extremely different, that's okay. I'm just really glad you are taking time out of your day and painting. You're actually not taking anything away. You're just adding to the awesomeness of your day when you get creative. And again, I am using student grade paint, which is why we will be doing two layers of this. And student grade paint is a bit on the transparent side, but it is rather affordable. So I recommend that you start with student grade paint. And then as you get more and more into the groove of painting, and maybe you need a new color, maybe try an artist grade. Um, paint. It will be a little more expensive, but just um, kind of notice the difference between the two and kind of decide what you like working with. So here we're doing kind of a medium raw sienna. So we did the white um, or raw sienna with some white in there. And there we go. So just making sure that was the correct color. It is pretty light and it looks kind of similar to what we were just using. So yeah, here we go. I added more white to it. So if you need to, it is totally okay to adjust your color after you've applied a few marks on your canvas. Um, we interpret our colors based on the color next to it. So it may look one way on your plate and then when you apply it, it looks a little different based on what you already have on your canvas. So art is never about being perfect, but just fine tuning and adjusting and observing with what you're painting, observing yourself with what you're creating, and like I said earlier, um, getting away from the regular world for a little bit. All right, so added a little bit more white going lighter. And here you can kind of see where I just mixed on the perimeter. So you can see the lightest color I'm using, a little bit darker next to it, a little bit darker. And we're just gonna kind of keep building off that pile, going lighter and lighter as we fill in the rest of the face 
uh, the fur strokes on the cat. Now, as you're watching me um, apply the dash marks for the cat, I do want you to kind of notice the direction I'm making those dash marks. They're not all in the same direction. Um, they're a little bit more vertical when they're going kind of up the nose towards the forehead. They will round out around the eyes above and below. So again, strengthen that power of observation and notice which direction I am making the dash marks. And generally the dash marks are going in the direction that the fur would actually grow. And as we get into these final stages of filling in the white canvas space, if you have any place um, on the face of your cat that there's still white um, canvas showing through, you can just grab any of the colors and fill it in. Like I said, we will do one more round on this and it's gonna kind of beef, beef it up and give it a bit more contrast after we do the hat. You're doing a great job. It is cute how this guy just kind of comes to life and you transform your white canvas. All right, so again, take your progress photo. We're gonna move into yellow paint and same thing that we did for the background and the shirt. We're gonna lay a base of yellow and then we're gonna put some lighter and darker shades on top of it. And again, I'm with that student grade paint, so I'm applying my amount of paint rather generous. Um, so that way I have a bit more opaque coverage and then it makes it, it gives it a nice base when we start putting those dash marks into it. So adjust based on the type of paint you are using. And again here you can see I'm just going right over those lines. Um, because I use the Sharpie marker at the beginning, the, it is shining through the paint because of the transparency of the paint. So those of you that transferred with the tr uh, carbon paper, you might not be able to see those lines. So again, you're just gonna be strengthening your power of observation as you watch the video. All right, so we're gonna add our highlight in first um, and we're gonna do a bit more blending. Here we go. So we blend that into the yellow and then we'll do our dash marks on top of that. And even with the yellow, even though it's a light color, it eats up that white paint rather quickly. So you saw how generous I was with the amount of globs of white paint I added to do the mixing. All right, so now we're getting into those dash marks. Using that direct raw sienna, we're gonna put our dash marks here where the shadows would be, so underneath the hat. Um, and again, notice the direction that they're going. Overlap your dash marks. Um, and just kind of go with the process. Sometimes when we do these dash marks, it is similar to how um, pointillism is applied. And if you're not sure what pointillism is, it's basically a bunch of dots that overlap each other to create a pattern or a design. And it is pretty amazing with what you can do with just dots. It is very approachable. So um, I recommend that you Google pointillism, pointillism art, um, and just kind of check out what it is. I have a feeling you will like it. All right, so again, where the shadow values are, um, moving into the top of the hat, noticing the direction of the dash marks. And because that yellow paint is still pretty wet underneath, because I applied it pretty generous, it does kind of change the shade of the raw sienna um, each time that I make a mark. Again, something else to observe. All right, so a little bit of that raw sienna and red paint is gonna be a perfect color for the nose of our cat. Um, if it's a little too bright for you or too dark, you can add a touch of white like I did, or if you kind of like the intensity, um, you can stick with just that red and raw sienna. And I am using the small pointy brush for this. All right, clean that brush really good. We're gonna move over to green and yellow and start doing the details of the eyes. And I recommend, oh, I didn't have green, so we actually made our own. Um, so it was the yellow with a touch of blue. But again, whether you have green or you're using blue, start with the yellow and add a small amount of your pigment um, to get to the shade that you want for your cat's eyes. 
If you would like light blue eyes, you'll start with white, add a touch of blue to get to your shade. If you want amber eyes, um, I would start with yellow and then add a touch of raw sienna. So again, your call, what you wanna make uh, the eyes of your cat be. So I did, we are going a little bit darker. So whatever color you were using to mix for yours, I added a touch more blue to mine. And on the tops and the kind of the edges of the eyeball, we're adding this color. And I am, because it's such a small space, kind of utilizing that pointillism concept where it's just a bunch of little dots that I'll make. And then it mixes with that first layer of that um, super light green that we put on there. I will be doing this with some more yellow and I believe a little bit of white for the highlight. So play with your um, eye colors on your cat and get it to where you like it. All right, so another place to pause the video, take your progress photo. And I actually let my painting dry for this so that way it wouldn't mix. And we're using that direct raw sienna and basically going back and putting a second layer on the fur of our cat. And you'll notice how much more opaque it makes it and kind of gives it a bit more contrast too. And if it gets too much with that middle um, flat brush, feel free, like I just did right here, jump down and grab that small pointy brush. And I'm still being rather generous with the amount of paint that I am applying. Still keeping with those little dash marks um, in the direction that the fur would be going. All right, and if you are finding that your brush is kind of shaky as you go to apply your paint, that means you're holding your breath. So take a big inhale, relax. You're doing a lot better than you may think you're doing. And if you think you're not doing that great, I want you to prop your painting up. And even if you think you're doing great, I want you to do the same thing, but prop your painting up and look at it from a distance of five to 10 feet away. This is the normal viewing distance for artwork and generally for most things in life. So we do tend to like things better from that distance. All right, so here we did the raw sienna and orange. Just going back and kind of intensifying it because this is a ginger cat. Um, nice little orange tabby. And here's where you can start to see just that thickness of the paint and the second layer just gives it a little bit more fullness and oomph um, and depth to the painting. doing a great job and just like we did on the first round we're basically starting with our dark shades and then just work our way down to our lighter areas and while you are painting if you need to turn your canvas sideways upside down put it on your lap Whatever you need to do, adjust and rotate the canvas as needed. I am keeping it in the same orientation just for the filming of the video. Otherwise, I would probably be turning the canvas sideways as I make some of these dash marks. And just a moment ago, you did see that we still made that mixture of the raw sienna and orange, but started to add a touch of white to it, going a little bit lighter. And again, that's going to be basically our course of action for the rest of the cat face as we get lighter and lighter and lighter. There we go. So adding again, more white paint to the mixture that you're using. And don't be afraid to overlap it like I'm doing on a few other areas. Um, this again, just helps kind of give the fullness of uh, the fur and the fluffy effect. It turned into a cute little cat. All right, so we're going to add more white to that mixture, going lighter yet again. And if you need to, if you've already got pretty thick paint on there, you can grab that direct white, and that's actually what I'm doing right here. Um, and apply it directly to the wet paint. It will change a little bit, but will also kind of keep that light, that lightness. 
So again, just using that pointy brush, little dash marks moving in the direction of the fur. It may feel some of these pure white marks may feel a little bit too much up close. So again, get out of your chair, look at it from a distance and um, just kind of appreciate the contrast and kind of that pop value that your pure white paint will bring. And then when we, if you even add black and increase your shadow value, um, those two colors can really uh, define and make a composition pop. Now, I personally like a lot of high contrast, so I enjoy it. Not every person um, likes high contrast art. So you will find what you like as you create and as you continue to observe the things that you like. And like I said before, trust your instincts. If you feel like adding something or inclined to add something that I do not add, go right ahead and do that. If you don't like it, you can actually just let it dry and then paint right on top of it again. All right, so we're gonna clean that brush. Um, going back to more of just the direct white and we're gonna add some highlights on the hat. I don't think we add any to the collar. Um, and then I think we'll add one more darker shadow with our raw sienna and black in the hat. And again, just notice how I'm overlapping those white dash marks on some of the other colors. Some of those raw sienna dash marks. You're doing a great job. Nope, and I had to grab some of that yellow if you need to go back over anything. With this kind of application, the dash marks, or if you even get into pointillism, um, the going back and forth, like you'll use your dark raw sienna, maybe you use your yellow, you use your white, and then you go back and use your yellow. Um, it's not a perfect method for how to paint. So it's more about kind of how you feel and trusting your instincts and not being afraid to overlap and layer colors. So for all my first time painters out there, uh, your very first painting may be kind of scary and challenging, but the more that you do it, the more comfortable you get and the more willing you're kind of, you are to push yourself into um, some more intense directions. All right, so here we're using that raw sienna and black and keep in mind that a little bit of black pigment goes a long way. So if you have to make a couple of piles um, because it got too dark on the first one, don't be afraid to do that. All right, so now taking that dark shadow value on the bottom of the hat, and this is giving us a fourth value on the hat where we have our light, our kind of medium light, our medium, our dark, and our darkest shade. A lot of these do look so much better as you start walking away from them and looking at them from a distance. And if you get the chance to go see a Van Gogh or Monet or um, any of the old master paintings, anything from the Renaissance, um, but especially the Impressionist paintings, if you get a chance to see a Monet or a Van Gogh, I want you to go up and look at it super close and then I want you to just kind of walk away and look at it from a distance and just notice the difference in what you observe, what your focus is, and just how you perceive the different colors. Uh, those are some of my favorite paintings to see in person. I get up up close and just love the colors and of course they're using oil paint. All right, so still using that um, black and uh, raw sienna mixture. We're going back to the eyes, kind of cleaning them up a little bit, getting rid of those little white corners. And then I believe, oh, still using that raw sienna and orange around the mouth, or raw sienna and uh, black, pardon me. Nice. And again, it's really kind of cool that we are using this color. It looks one way when we put it on the hat. And then it looks a little bit different when it's next to the fur and orange colors, even though it is the same color that we're using. 
The great thing about art is there's always, always new things to learn and new things to challenge yourself with. All right, so now going back to the black paint, um, we're going to really define those eyes. and We're basically outlining them. So I want you to use your brush kind of like a pencil using just the tip of the brush. And if you need to, uh, rest your forearm against the edge of the table and breathe. If you are again finding that you're shaky, that means you're holding your breath. So exhale as you touch the brush to the canvas. And if you do what I did on the left eyeball, and I think I do it on the right eyeball as well, if you went over that white dot, don't freak out. We're going to reapply that white dot in a moment. All right, oh, I thought we did the nose. There we go. And again, I had a little too much water on that one, so you can always wipe it off and grab more paint. All right, and then clean that brush really good. We're going to use white paint. We're going to reapply um, the, what we call the catch light. I do recommend letting that black paint dry before you do this, but just reference the traceable, reference the video. We're applying it right in the same position. Now here you can see I put some water on the plate and now I'm adding white to it. We're going to do this for the whiskers. Practice the whiskers on a scrap sheet of paper before you do them on the painting. And again, you want to keep light pressure and I want you to uh, put the brush where the whisker would start and then it's going to be a flick of the wrist. So like I said, practice on a scrap sheet of paper before you do it on your painting. Definitely remember to breathe as you do this. And each one of you will find a different consistency that you need for your paint. If you have really runny paint, do not add any water. It's already runny enough. If you have thicker paint, kind of like what I'm using here, um, or a little bit more viscous paint, then you add a little bit of water to it. Again, remember to breathe. Whiskers um, definitely are a fine tuning point. So if it's very, very scary to do whiskers, um, an alternative that I gave a lot of my students was you can grab a white sh uh, Sharpie marker or a silver Sharpie marker. And if you grab the silver Sharpie marker, um, you can put the silver on there and then use that as your base and go over it with the brush and white paint. And you saw I put a few highlights around the eyes and a little bit on the nose. Anywhere else you would like to add something, trust your instincts and add it to your painting. So thanks so much for painting with me today. Hope you guys have a good afternoon. Hey guys, how's it going? I hope your paintings turned out really nice and I hope you enjoyed the process of painting. I'm really proud of you. Good job. As you're uploading your pictures to social media, please tag me at or hashtag paintwithlovejoy or email them to me, paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. Um, it truly is through you guys sharing my channel and videos, you sharing your work that encourages other people to paint. Um, and then when I post your guys' pictures on my social media, it encourages more people to paint. So please keep spreading the word. This channel is as successful as it is based on your guys' support and feedback. So you have brought it here. Let's keep it going. Um, any questions, comments, things you want me to paint in the future, please leave a comment in the description box below and I'll add it to my production list. And um, keep on painting. Keep on getting creative. Thanks so much for taking time out of your day to hang out with me. Really appreciate it. And I look forward to painting with you in the future. Cheers.